There's a lot going on in this question. First of all, go tech, guns up, Texas Tech all the way. Um, okay. Now, with regards to this, uh, let's see. Now, enrolled in a virtual academy through his home school district since August. All right, so the virtual academy was offered through your home school district. He's been doing that since August. Prior to that, he attended uh, in-person school for two hours and the rest of his school working uh, at, at an ABA center. Now, what I want to know there is who put him in the ABA center? So he was at school for part of his day and then an ABA center. So you would need to answer that portion. Uh, but then prior to enrolling in ABA, he had significant behaviors at school, which resulted in stitches, um, self-interest behaviors, um, suspensions due to aggression. Now, the IEP meeting that you had today, which whatever day you posted this, um, they stated that you waived your right to a free appropriate public education due to COVID, which is untrue. You, you wrote that. I agree with you. Um, my question is, how do I address the fact that the school is stating that, I, that you waived your child's right to FAPE when you feel like they were not providing a safe and appropriate educational setting for your child? School had decided to implement the new IEP without your agreement. Okay, couple things. Like I said, now due to COVID, um, if the school was open, and I know you live in a state to where, you know, there was some uh, gray areas as to whether or not it was really open, not open, whether that flexibility was there. But at the end of the day, uh, there were no waivers of any kind of rights uh, to your child uh, during the pandemic. Okay, so the fact that you chose virtual school, if it was offered uh, and available through the public school, then at that point for this past school year, from August to current, he was virtual. And uh, I'm not saying that that waived his rights, but what I'm saying is that has nothing to do with, with the year prior. The year prior, uh, when you were having all these issues with him getting hurt, him getting suspended, uh, no, they're, they're fully exposed legally because you have that two-year statute of limitations. And so you're within your rights, your legal rights to take action on correcting that. And quite frankly, if, if it was so egregious, which reading your scenario, uh, that would be enough for me if we practiced in your state uh, to take a case like that in order to look a little bit further uh, to put those pieces together. Because in that situation, if there was self-injury, if there were repetitive suspensions for aggression, if the school didn't do anything uh, tangible um, based upon the science to, to mitigate those factors and help your child progress, then at that point, yes, I believe as a parent, you're well within your rights to choose an environment that is safe for your child and conducive for their learning style. And so if, if you felt like you had no option because of the pandemic, but also because of the prior history, then at that point, no, it, there would be no waiver of rights. They, what, what basically they're saying is, is that that's legally defensible for them uh, to be able to sit there and say, well, she chose virtual. You know, she chose virtual during that time, or she, she chose this um, uh, combination of services. Uh, that might be true, but let's look a little bit further back within that statute. What did you do that or what didn't you do to help mitigate the situation and then create an environment of positivity, of progression, um, of stability and safety for this child. And it put the parent in, in the position to have to make those determinations for safety as, as a priority and the availability of, of, uh, of this virtual programming. Um, and, you know, at that point, yes, retrospectively, you can go back and you can sit there and challenge um, those decisions based upon that disastrous year and, and the impact that it was having on your child. What you would need is you would need to show the data since that point where it was a positive change, where your child has been making progress, 
where he hasn't been engaging in self-injury to where he hasn't been removed from his learning environment through suspensions. So therefore he, he was gaining greater benefit of, of receiving instruction. So it, you, you would compare apples to apples. This is what happened when they had him. And this is what was going on when I made a decision as a valuable member of the IEP team um, with safety as one of the priorities. So yes, uh, you're still within your rights. Uh, you, you haven't lost anything. Um, I don't know where they come up with this crap, uh, but I'm sorry that that's happening to you. Now, with regards to your current IEP, if they're just implementing it, um, I just did a video. You might want to look, you know, I'm wearing the same outfit. Um, but I, I, I talk about uh, what you need to do for IEPs uh, that are implemented um, that you disagree with. Uh, there is a process for that, okay, as well. But they have a right to move forward in implementing an IEP, uh, even when a parent disagrees with it. Um, you have to take action as a parent in order to sort of stop that. Um, and then make the changes or challenge uh, that implementation.